Thanks for staying with us. Now, nepotism, corruption, oppression, dictatorship, accumulation of wealth. These are some of the few words you would find once you type leadership in Africa on the Google search engine. Now, in 2017, Dr. Sam Adeyemi wrote an article published by World Economic Forum where he stated that Africa doesn't need charity. It needs good leadership. And the cultivation of leaders with exceptional character and skill is critical to Africa's development. He further explained that incompetence in leadership in most African countries is, the, is not only the problem of people who occupy positions in government, it is a reflection of leadership culture and that we have had different leaders with the same results for decades in Africa. So if we were to go by this history, will we, um, we, one helps to wonder if our future as a continent will be any different. <laughs> right. So Dr. Sam Adeyemi is the principal consultant of Sam Adeyemi GLC Incorporated, a leading global leadership consulting company with a mission to raise high impact leaders to shape the fortunes and destinies of nations. He holds a Master's of Arts degree in Leadership Studies from the University of Exeter, UK, and is a Doctor of Strategic Leadership from Regent University, Virginia, USA. He is a member of the International Leadership Association, and as a global conference speaker, he has addressed audiences all around the world. Now, remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Waste Your Africa One with the hashtag Waze, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-8038-4663. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Sam Adeyemi. Thank you very much for having me on the Waze show. <laughs> it's good to have you. It's I mean, pleasure. long anticipated, but we are finally here and um, we'll make do with technology. <laughs> Thank you, exactly. I was supposed to be in your studio live, yeah. but uh, leveraging technology. Yes, leveraging technology. So we just want to go right into the conversation. Um, I read that article you wrote um, in 2017 at the World Economic Forum and you, you talked about cultivating leadership, I'm sorry, cultivating leadership, uh, leaders with good character, you know, if we were to go by that, what would you think should be a starting point? Because it is not for lack of, in the past we've had historical leaders in the past truly desired yeah. greatness for, um, for Africa, right? So if, right. if that greatness was part of them, in fact, if you look at the pledges of our countries globally, I mean, sorry, across the continent, you will see that in the pledge there's a genuine um, thirst to want to build a great nation. So where right. did we miss it? And if we were to cultivate this character you're talking about, where do we start from? Thank you very much. Um, okay, so I've been around Africa a little bit, <laughs> quite a number of nations, and I found this consistency, consistency in terms of uh, underdevelopment. My first time in South Africa, I was surprised when I visited Johannesburg and saw infrastructure like you have in Europe. Then it occurred to me, you know, that the root of our leadership issues in Africa is likely in the culture, likely in our set of values. Now, when you say culture, um, people become defensive because we can't throw all of our culture away. And there are some good aspects to our culture, which is the truth. I met a culture that valued hard work. I met a culture that uh, respected diversity because I grew up in a community where our neighbor was not only from another tribe in Nigeria, but was also from another religion. And we went, to, we went along quite well. So the truth is that while some aspects of a culture can aid development, some other aspects of culture can impede development. And I believe that we have some dimensions of our culture there. Let me start from our concept of leadership. 
Hmm. You know, the average person believes that the leader is the one that occupies the position. When you say our leaders, the average Nigerian or African only thinks about the people in political leadership, the people in government. Or they may add um, the leaders in our organizations. <clears throat> like you observed earlier on, I did my postgraduate studies in leadership. So I realized that things have moved on. The discussion has moved on. Leadership now is simply ability to influence one or more people to achieve a worthwhile goal. Yeah. Easy. Once you bring leadership down to that definition, then you realize leadership happens at all levels. Absolutely. So I tell people, if you persuaded your friend to go with you to buy sweets when you were a child, you led your friend. Hmm. So once, so don't forget that our leadership culture is built on the monarchical structure. We originally had kings. Everybody else was a subject. Uh, to us in our generation, we may not understand the depth of it. But the culture I come from in southwestern Nigeria, the names we use for our kings make them sovereign. In fact, next to God in their ability to, like one Yoruba word, kabiosi, actually means you're not accountable to anybody. Hmm. So one day I had this discussion with my father-in-law, and he said, let me explain what it means to an Oba to you and the influence of the Oba. He said, you know what they call the market in Yoruba land, Oja Oba, it's the king's market. Hmm. The farms, Oku Oba, the king's farm. In fact, the government is called Ijo Oba, which is the king's assembly. So he said the palace guard would come from the palace with a bag hung on his shoulder with a spoon or some spatula. And he will go walk into the market and dip it, you know, <laughs> scoop into the beans or whatever was being sold in the market, scoop as much as he wanted into the bag and walk away. And while he was doing that, the person selling would be, would courtesy, KBSU, KBSU. And the guy will walk away without paying anything because the king owned the market and everything and everybody that was there. They may not tell us that now. They may not teach us explicitly. But sincerely speaking, it's in the structure of our thinking when it comes to leadership. You'll be amazed how the average Nigerian or African wields power, however little that power may that be, maybe as a gate man. Absolutely. You know? <laughs> okay, the way we use power, you know, we don't use it for service. We use it to dominate and we use it for survival. We use it to accumulate good. So if you ask me where should we start from, I would say it's the education. It's the education, it's the education with the intention to shift our value system. The countries we want to become like, the countries that our young people are running out to, they are countries where they believe in equality. Absolutely. It's there in the founding document of the United States of America, in France, equality is a big word, it's everywhere. All men are created equal. In, in Africa, the leader does not believe that. The followers too don't believe that. That's why we accept to be treated as victims. We are practically as slaves in our own countries. Mm -hmm. So the starting point is shifting the value system. That's where the educational system comes in. I'm, I'm wondering where we will go without changing our educational system. Unfortunately, the people deriving the benefit, the power from the existing system are in control of the educational system. So you see, there isn't that much interest in any radical transformation, but I think technology is giving us an opportunity. So those of us that know the truth need to share it so our people can be free in their minds. Every Nigerian, for example, needs to know the president is not really your boss. Practically speaking, in a democracy, he is your servant. And you need to be able to ask what the governor or president or local government chairman Absolutely. is doing with your money. Absolutely. So I'll leave it there. <laughs> Fantastic, Dr. Sam. Thank you very much for that. So my, my question is actually um, in line with what you've spoken about, and it's, is leadership actually a universal concept, or must it be contextualized to suit social cultural uh, peculiarities? So for instance, Lee Kuan Yew was a transformative leader 
in Singapore, taking it from the third world to first world. You know, is this something that can, African countries can model, or do we say that because of our social cultural peculiarities, then we have to um, tailor a leadership style to, to, to those norms? Thank you very much. Um, see, in life, you will always have principles and then you have methods. The principles are universal. It's like gravity. Whether it's in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, or Beijing, China, or Pretoria, South Africa, or uh, Abuja, Nigeria, if you throw your phone up, it's coming down. So principles are universal. There are basic principles of leadership. Those are universal. But then when it comes to you applying the principles, then you need to adapt the principles to your context. So to that extent, yes, in different parts of the world, we need to adapt the principles. So there are parts of the world, for example, uh, the UAE, where the system of government is monarchical. And they are experiencing development now because they have benevolent leadership. They have leadership that has the interest of the people at heart and that is aligning with the principles. What you would observe uh, around Africa is the fact that whether it's a monarchy or a democracy or even military rule, the results have not been very different. So there are universal principles in leadership that are applicable everywhere. I'll give you an example. Vision. A leader must have the capacity to see people, places, and things, not just the way they are, but the way they could be. A leader has to be able to recognize potential. A leader has got to be positive. A leader has got to have an intuitive sensing of the future, where we should go. And a leader needs to have the capacity to communicate it. So we say in leadership circles that it is vision that makes a leader. Where there's no vision, there's no leader. If you are not taking people from point A to point B, you are not leading them. That's an illustration I give whenever I teach leadership. I stand at a spot, I ask somebody to stand behind me. Then I ask the audience, if we stood here for 12 hours and neither of us moved, and then you came and asked me what I was doing to him or her, and I said to you, oh, I am leading him or I am leading her. Will that be a correct statement? Please bear in mind, we've Absolutely. been at the same spot for 12 hours. Absolutely the, answer is, the answer is always the same. They say no. I said, why do you think I'm not leading this person? They say, because you're not moving. Then I say, thank you. Where there is no movement, there's no leadership. If you're not taking me from point A to point B, there is no leadership going on. So. The principle of vision is there. There are other principles that govern leadership. Those principles have to be there everywhere on this planet. But then we can adapt the principles to our own scenario uh, when it comes to practice. Okay. So, um, Pastor Sam, let's look at the principle of leadership and motivation, okay? The average right. African is already demotivated by the right. African leaders psychosocial and psychobabble. And we know that motivation plays a huge role in leadership. Where did yes. our leaders get it wrong? Well, uh, the first thing I would say is that principle of vision. You've got to be able to tell people things are going to change, things are going to be better, and you've got to be able to say it with conviction. So which means that as a person, you've got to have developed the capacity to recognize potential. They say eyes that look are common, but eyes that see are few. Those few eyes belong to the leaders. So when a leader looks at a seed, for example, you know, an orange seed, a leader is the one that recognizes, hmm, this thing is a seed today, but inside it is the potential for a plantation. So we have people in leadership a lot of the time that don't have that vision in the first place. Sincerely speaking, they don't. 
They do not see the countries, they do not see our cities the way they can be in 20, 30, 40 years time. If they did, they should have said so. Vision is so powerful. You know what it does to people? You paint a picture of a positive future, it heals people on the inside. People then begin to see themselves in the picture. They see a new version of themselves. That new version is what they want. That's why they stand up to come after you. Now, it's not only should you have the vision, you've got to be able to communicate it. You can have fantastic ideas. If you can't transplant them into other people's minds, they're not following you anywhere. Exactly. That's one shot for But I'll tell you the one that I think is the biggest problem. I think it's the character problem. As a leader, you know, um, a research was conducted and people were asked, what would you, what qualities would you like to see best in your leaders? The number one was, we want our leaders to model the way. They should be what they want us to become. Once what you are saying does not match what you are doing as a leader, you are a hypocrite. Hypocrisy erodes trust, erodes cred the credibility of a leader, and he erodes trust. So, uh, sincerely speaking, most Africans are tired of listening to their government officials on TV, Absolutely. on radio. <laughs> because they realize these things are written by script writers. Absolutely. So, uh, so government officials, they say what they should say, it sounds right, you know, we used to have a lot of hope in those words and so on. And then one, two, three, four years down the line, the hope is dashed. So people don't want their hopes raised anymore. So the character exactly. bit is very important that the leader has got to model the values that will shape the leader's behavior and the behavior of everybody else. So, so Dr. Sam, I'm happy you, you, you just said this now because I want to take us back to our quotes. So we have a quote for the day. And the quote for today was, Leadership is a potent combination of strategy and character. But if we must choose one, if, if we must be without one, we have to be without strategy. So now you have just said that character is very key, but you're a strategic <laughs> leader. <laughs> so how do yes. you tie up this quote? Well, I'll tell you that you actually need the combination. You need the combination of character. I usually say competence. Leadership is a skill that is learned. When I realized that's why I went after it, my background is in engineering, <laughs> okay? That's why I went for the master's degree and then went for the doctoral program in leadership. It's a skill. And because it's a skill, it can be learned. If you have a leader, that has character, but has no skill. Hmm. You have a very good person that will not get you anywhere. Ooh. Okay, my illustration. You want to travel from Lagos to Ibado, Nigeria. You board a vehicle. They tell you the driver is a good man. He doesn't <laughs> lie. He does not see <laughs> people. Oh he has never stolen anybody's money yes. before. But I'm not going. nobody taught him how to drive. <laughs> Would you stay in the vehicle? Absolutely not. <laughs> okay, another illustration. Uh, <laughs> I was chatting on a flight with my good friend, Donald Duke, former governor of Cross River State. So I said to him, some of the things you did while you were a governor showed that you had capacity for vision. I really like that. I don't see that quality in many of your contemporaries in politics. He said, Sam, you know, our case in Nigeria is like that of an aircraft that is being flown by pilots that did not go to flying school. Ooh, yeah, I remember that. He said, when they crash the plane, then everybody will be screaming. I said, wow, what an illustration. So... <laughs> If you have character, you don't have skills, people will just be saying, no, oh, he's, he's a good man, she's a good woman, mm -hmm. but no. there won't be much improvement. Absolutely. If you have someone, and I, I wrote this in my book on leadership, lead, I said, if you have someone that has skill, has competence, but has no character, you just have 
a very sophisticated crook Oof. who will take everybody for a ride. The person knows what to do with leadership, but the person's motives are wrong. The person does not have the character, the discipline to produce success for everybody. So most of the time, the person is selfish and greedy. So I would say a leader is the combination of character and competence, and I will add eventually capacity. The person's got to be able to go from local to national, from national to global in their worldview. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Sam. We're having so much fun, we forgot to go on a break. Let's go and pay <laughs> our bills. We'll be right back. <laughs>